Okay, here in round two. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty lacking hand too, but I feel like I'm going to keep it on the draw. Uh, I wanted to quickly mention... Uh, Avzan Runemark should probably not be in my main deck. It, after uh, game three of match one, I realized we have a grand total of one, two, uh, three. I guess you can count debilitating injury, so four permanents that actually turn on Avzan Runemark. So it's like a worse than giant strength currently in our deck, but whatever. That's okay. So we're going to keep this kind of awkward hand because it's got a Bellowing Saddle Brute that I can eventually cast. But yes, it does not look like a an excellent hand by any means. But rapidly gets better with a two drop. Hey, what do you know? We drew one. So hand gets better. Very good. No two drop from our opponent. Hey, another good spell. All right. So we'll drop our Cleric, get a life gain action going. No three drop play from our opponent either. Interesting. Hate Blade, yeah, it seems like it's pretty good draw here. So we'll get in with the Cleric, drop a Hate Blade, and pass. All right, Teamer, Archers of Carsey. Very interesting. All right. Uh, well, this is interesting. I don't think he'll block, but I guess I kind of want him to. But the whole point is I want to be able to resolve this uh, Saddle Brute so, without having to lose four life. So now that we've got it, we can cast Harsh Sustenance on this Archers and safely get in. Frostwalker. All right. Well, uh, it's not that big of a deal. It still can't really trade with the Saddle Brute, so I think we're just going to swing with Hate Blade and Saddle Brute. Leave back the Cleric to trade with the, the Frostwalker, I think. But let's harsh sustenance the Archers. Let's get in with Hate Blade Saddle Brute. Oh, well, all right. I'm okay with that trade. I mean, maybe he just figured the Frostwalker was going to die anyway, so why not? All right. A morph, no land, no land drop. So I guess we'll just swing in Saddle Brute. Could fake something with the Cleric, but that's okay. Drop that. And at this point, we're turn away from Venerable Lamassu hardcast, so that also means that, oh, I, all right, concession, Mrs. Landrop. Teamer deck with Sage Eye Harrier, that's pretty, oh, this opponent failed to submit. I probably should have noticed that, considering he's uh, got a ton of cards in his, his deck, so that makes sense. Okay, so I assume our opponent's going to take a little bit to Make his deck less big. In the meantime, maybe we want to cut this rune mark for something like a, I don't know, probably Defiant. You know, honestly, Siegecraft is, is probably better in our deck than Avzan rune mark is. So that was just not a card I should have played. Actually, you know, I'm going to play this Sibzig host. Not a good card, but considering I, I seem to have an issue with get, <laughs> actually playing my Shamley Attendance Dead Drop. I think a 2-6 is not out of line uh, for our deck. Who knows? Maybe it'll mill our opponent's three most important cards, too, if we get lucky. So, yeah, let's let's run a janky little Sibsig host, see what that does for us. Well, I guess, yeah, we're going to have to mulligan this, but I was going to say, uh, our opponent managed to win round one, so... That's impressive in itself that he or she, Kelly can be a guy named too, but much more likely a, a girl. Uh, she was able to either win game one or uh, wins game two and three. All right, I guess we'll keep this one. 
still awkward since most of the spells in our hand are either expensive or require black, but I guess I'm hopeful we can uh, draw something cheap or black. All right. Well, Erish and Cleric helps. Frostwalker? Sultai Skullkeeper. All right. Mountain and Inok Bonkin. So perhaps Jeskai post uh, board. Definitely would have liked a swamp there, but that's all right. I'll settle for a cleric into a land. Hmm. All right. Well, still desperately hunting for a swamp, but let's see if we can't dig one up next turn. Scaldkin, yeah, it's not the end of the world. All right, unfortunate draw there, but can do nothing but accept. No plays. Here's our swamp, so I guess we'll bash in, play the Saddle Brute, and pass. Good cards in hand. I mean, we've got a lot of removal. All right. Well, can still attack into that, which is kind of nice. I would like to. Hmm. Yeah, I was gonna say that doesn't make sense. So there's a land, so I guess we can reach of shadows the manifest dude. But I think we attack first in case our opponent double blocks. Because I love that sweet, sweet value. Yeah, if he double blocks, he or she rather double blocks, they're in a world of trouble. Um, oh, I actually can't reach of shadows a manifest creature. Well, in that case... Let's just drop Mystics and pass. Now, our opponent can attack with Skullkin and blow up our Mystics, but I think I'm okay with that. We're still slightly ahead on the race. And if he or she does want to do the Skullkin thing, then I'm going to have to leave that mana up, because next turn we can... We can, with our instants, find a good opportunity to prowess that guy up. Well, I guess the good news is, if this is a creature and our opponent flips it, then I can kill it. Unless, of course, it's an artifact of some sort. Uh, but we also have Dowson Gloom and Harsh Sustenance for life gain, so I feel like we're in a pretty good racing spot. I mean, if I draw a land, I can actually cast both. So if our opponent leaves up the mana to Skullkin, I can be like, you know, I don't know, douse and gloom on your Skullkeeper in response, blow up my Mystic. Response to that, Heart Sustenance you or something like that. Hmm. Well, I think we're just going to block like this. All right. All right. It's pretty.
pretty good. Got the card draw pretty good. To the six lands now. So I guess we douse and gloom the Skaldkin and crack back, and then we're back ahead in the race. And we have harsh sustenance when it comes to that. We're also a mana from Lamassu, so kind of like the position we're in. Two pretty good removal spells, one of which gains us life. A big fat fatty if we draw a land. Um, I feel like I can deal with a lot of different things. Certainly wouldn't mind this manifest being a creature. As long as I can kill it with reach. Hmm, well, found my Reach of Shadows target. And I will do it before swing with the Saddle Brute, mostly because I want to be able to swing with my Cleric too. So, yeah, it's not bad actually. Now I can take care of that as well, so that's kind of convenient. No white mana left up, so I don't think I have anything to worry about. Get in for some damage. Next turn we can Harsh Sustenance plus Sandblast. Our opponent would have to have, even if they had Rush of Battle and Trumpet Blast, that would not be enough. Ooh, Force Away? Oh, no. Something like Will of the Naga. Mm, it's pretty good. So we're going to get bashed down with that. Can't leave up the Sandblast now. So we are taking pretty big damage here, but not quite dead yet. Mind Scour Dragon. All right. Well, that's going to be a bit challenging. So now I guess I have to sandblast the dragon. Shambling Attendance, which I would like to cast, but can't do it and leave up Sandblast. I could go to one... Let me think about this. Five, no. Hmm. This is interesting. I kind of want to play the attendance this turn. I mean, I'm taking four regardless. But if I sandblast, that way it, it plays around... I guess it plays around removal. It doesn't play around protection if I leave up Sandblast, but it plays around removal. It also allows me to keep Harsh Sustenance up for just some crazy reason, like I need to cast it to gain extra life or something. We are going to kill the uh, Mind Scour Dragon. I think if this were a creature, our opponent at this point would have... Uh, would have flipped it. Maybe I should have actually waited till blocking step in case they had some sort of cute uh, trick they wanted to do or something. Well, if my opponent plays a creature, I'm kind of hopeful it's something I can kill. I guess one upside is Shamley Attendance only costs four now, which I guess means if I draw a land, I can still cast Harsh Sustenance. Or I could cast Harsh Sustenance at end of turn to kill something if it comes down to that, I guess. Or like my opponent tries to wild slash me for the win, I can harsh sustenance them in response. Which is also not too shabby. Or my opponent could ideally have nothing, and then I'm in okay shape. 
Lotus Path Gen. Well, that one is certainly not nothing. So now I'm in a position where I need to either draw a land. If I can draw a land, I can harsh sustenance with Shambling Attendance to kill the Lotus Path Gen. Otherwise, yeah, that's tough. That's actually really tough. Because now it's like, well, I, I guess it's okay, actually. I don't want to just harsh sustenance my opponent so I can cast Shamley. I think this is actually... Well, he didn't get what I wanted, but... Yeah, that's... That's tough, actually. Yeah, that's pretty tough. So now I'm forced to cast harsh sustenance on my opponent to live. That's not ideal. Really do wish I had one more land. If I had one more land, I could play Attendance plus Harsh Sustenance my opponent's Lotus Path Gen and be in a really good spot. Be in a really good spot. But now I can cast Sipsig Host plus Shamley Attendance, but then I'm just dead to Lotus Path Gen. Can't cast my 7-drop. So just kind of an awkward spot now. I guess we just pass. And I'm going to Lotus Path Gen and hope my opponent doesn't have Prowess? Casting hard sustenance on my opponent is so lackluster. All right. Well, looks like we lose regardless, unfortunately. Yeah, so I hard sustenance, and I still take three in the air. Well, that was a pretty harsh loss. I feel like we didn't do anything that game. I just kept being in a position where I had expensive things in my hand that I couldn't play. That was tremendously awkward. All right. Let's, uh, and Frostwalker was the last card in the hand. Or, yeah, I guess... Wait, that was the Frostwalker is what was underneath the Manifest. So my opponent could have unmanifested and had two more power and two less toughness, which is interesting. Or wait, is that even right? Comes in with two counters on it. So one less toughness, three more, or two more power? Yeah. All right, well, we uh, unfortunately got destroyed there. I guess I can... Uh, Guess we gotta hope we draw a little bit better. We still don't really have much of a sideboard plan, so let's try it again. Uh, yeah, this hand seems fine. A little bit creature light, but removal heavy, so seems fine. All right. Oop, I don't want to cast that one. Let's do this one first. All right. So a bunch of removal that we can play. We are going to need threats and lands at some point. But for now, I'm pretty content with where we're at. I knock Bonkin. You got it. Let's, uh, let's get in for one here. Not going to play around Feet of Resistance, mostly due to the sheer quantity of removal that I have. Ooh, very good. Very good. So, I guess I do Douse now. Uh, mostly because if I draw a threat, I want to be able to cast it. I, granted, I'm giving up on a point of damage here, but... That could have also panned out really well for us if we drew a creature there. Because, keep in mind, our 4-drop slot is just full of a bunch of creatures. <laughs> we have just straight up 5 creatures at the 4-drop slot that I was kind of hoping to draw there, but that's okay. Or, as well as Erish and Clerics, or War Behemoth. Stuff like that. No plays from our opponent. Interesting. Horde mate. Well, does have raid, but I don't think we're going to be using it. So let's bust out a horde mate here and pass. So opponent's got Will of the Naga and Water World, both of which are pretty good at uh, buying some time. All right. Well. 
Sandblast is an interesting one. Or uh, Dazzling Ramparts, rather, since we can sandblast it for pretty good value here. So we'll just get in, sandblast it. Makes our prowess, so it makes our dude bigger. Kills it. So we deal extra damage. Makes our dead drop cheaper. Seems okay. Still have injury and heart sustenance. Both of which are fine. All eventually leading up to dead drop, which is still out of range, even if both of these cards were in our graveyard, which is kind of funny, actually. This card is very expensive. Now, granted, I did not have to kill Dazzling Ramparts. I just feel like keeping the threat going on our opponent for now is is right. Sage Eye Harrier. All right. Guess we're going to end up using Debilitating Injury on that after it blocks the Timely Horde Mate. And we get to play War Behemoth to boot, too, so that's kind of nice. Now, I could have pre-combated the Debilitating Injury, but I don't think that would have made a whole lot of sense. Hey! You want to take two extra points of damage, be my guest. All right, water world bouncing our dudes. We've still got pretty good mana here. Um, I can't do timely horde mate plus war behemoth, so I'm a little more tempted to just hard cast the war behemoth. Um, I don't really have a means to kill sage eye harrier either. I think we're just gonna cast this and then pass. To me, it's better than just horde mate. Just makes better use of the mana. Plus our opponent already knows what it is, so. No illusion. We're currently two mana away from dead drop. Line Scour Dragon. Which is fine. So now I guess we're just one land away from. I think we swing with both of these. See how my opponent blocks, because I'm curious. Because it doesn't matter. We get the horde. The horde mate's going to bring back the thing regardless. And then just take in three. All right. You got it. So I think that we... So, what can I do? I can injure something. I probably just horde mate and then pass. I have harsh sustenance up, but not enough to kill yet. If our opponent like water whirls and I draw a land, I can just dead drop them, which doesn't seem bad. We're still in a pretty good racing position. Our opponent is overly not blocking our big threats and like taking extra damage too, just playing around removal. That kind of has a little bit of inevitability to it. Now it's just swinging in for the fences, which makes me think a will of the Naga or a water world's coming up, but I think we're, we're in okay shape with the dead drop. Let's see if they, if they mill us too, our dead drops cheaper. So we don't even have to worry about the card draw and yeah, they are choosing us. Okay. So Swamp Plains, Cleric, ooh, losing the Scale Guard is kind of a bummer, but that's okay. Post-combat play. Hmm. 
No post combat play. So I suspect a water whirl. Guess I want a dead drop first. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Which means I have to do four of seven so I can follow up with the Warby Myth when they bounce it. I think I just swing first. I know it seems strange, but with the mana up, I don't know. I kind of want them to just... I want to verify that I, I'm, I'm dealing with Waterworld this turn, basically. Or uh, Will of the Naga, rather. I guess since she already played the, the Water Whirl. Crippling Chill on the Horde Mate. Alright. Okay with that. Whisk away on the Warby Myth. Alright. Well, opponent did a pretty good job there of getting rid of our board state, but we do have the dead drop and a cleric, so opponent's going to lose their board. Let's maximize. Let's keep as much graveyard as we can here. So, two, three. Uh, I don't know if I want to get rid of that one, actually. Let's get rid of that. Wait, I don't have any way to bring stuff back, right? I don't think I do. So, opponent's going to discard some stuff. Now I feel like we're actually set up a bit better. I feel like we kind of tempted our opponent to use both Crippling Chill and Whisk Away in one turn, which is actually pretty nice. I mean, granted, we have some pretty unimpressive threats at the moment, but plenty more good stuff to draw, I guess. Although, losing that elite scale guard did bum me out quite a bit. Something else big I gotta deal with? Oh, arrow storm on a timely horde mate. That I can tolerate. Sultai skull keeper, you got it. Still swinging for the fences with both of our guys. And I'm not, we're just in such a good racing position right now that I'm not going to bust any removal on a uh, Sultai Skull Keeper. Something big. Oh. It's the second time. I've, oh, my God. We were going to draw five lands. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Well, I think we have our opponent dead, right? Or like, maybe we don't, actually, now that I think about it. That was so many lands. That was bad. So let me think. I well maybe we do. Yeah, yeah we do. So debilitating injury, prowess, pre-combat harsh sustenance for prowess, and even another damage to spare. So all right, beat our uh, round two opponent uh, after giving up. This is the second time I've seen Fascination played. I don't like the card. I don't think it's very good. If it had been an instant, it would have been pretty highly playable. I could see that. End of your opponent's turn. Each player draws X, but it really doesn't make sense to me. The This is more of a, you know, this is a good uh, commander card, I think. This would be an awesome uh, buddy commander deck card. Hey, all of us will draw cards. I could see that, but not so good in uh, in draft, I don't think. All right, we'll see you in round three.